The DNA of this film, the history of this sort of cinematic experience comes from those great location motion pictures, those big films that went out onto location and used the landscape to amplify the emotional content of the story. When I came to look at how to make Australia, increasingly we're in a world where the genius of someone like George Lucas can go into a soundstage like the one here and just with a blue screen create entire worlds and universes. And it's really interesting because, in my opinion, location filmmaking is going back towards where it was in, say, Gone with the Wind. The canvas on which Gone with the Wind is painted on is the sweeping saga of the American Civil War in the Deep South. But it was predominantly shot in sound stages. Some of the most powerful images in Gone with the Wind are, in fact, painted glass plates. And that was a real option, and it was something that I was very, very interested in. But equally, I was also drawn to the historical way a film like this would be made by a David Lean who would go out and get lost in Wadi Ram in Jordan and, and make sure that he was there in the actual landscape, in the actual location, to capture the power and the beauty and the magnificence of that location. Where did we end up? In fact, we found a language that we call the Lean and the Lucas, which is really a way of using both the sound stages and location work. Baz shoots a lot of the wides and stuff and the big, big, big majestic shots on location and because of the limited amount of time and just the amount of work it goes into creating those um, epic moments, what we do is we then come back because we're not being controlled by the environment and light and we're able to control it more in a, in a studio situation. You're not affected by noise. You don't have to keep stopping because an aeroplane flies over or something happens, some noise that you can't film with. People don't get cold uh, because they're out in the elements. Uh, you don't get wind. It's just a lot more controllable. Uh, on location, all these variables make it uh, slower. It's more cumbersome. It's, uh, it's not as efficient as filming in a studio. But on this film, all the rules were broken and uh, we went on location for a very, very long time and uh, to get the grandeur of the places that we were going to, we had to be there. An epic in all sense of the word. Getting there, organising it when we were there, and the look of it will be epic, so it was worth going there. Having committed to shooting on location, it then forced us to go on an epic journey ourselves in search of this film, and it took us right throughout the country from Sydney to Bowen in Queensland, to Darwin, Kununurra, and then ending back in Sydney in the sound stages at Fox Studios to do the close-ups. I think it was just the sheer scale of it all, that we were so spread out all over the country, and it was, it's the largest production that would ever have been mounted in Australia. And to take a production like that to the ends of Australia, literally the ends of Australia, where there aren't the infrastructure that you would hope for, was a big challenge. It was like having a big beast lumbering up behind you and just trying to keep one step ahead of it. Once they started filming, 
It's like everything leading up to that seems to take forever, but once filming starts, it's like sands going through the last bit of an hourglass, and it seems each day seems to go so quickly, and then the next location, and then the next location. So you're constantly worried, are all the permissions in place, or is the infrastructure in place? Is someone going to walk out of the woodwork and say, what are you doing here? Because on a, on a film like this, it's so big, and so much publicity uh, that you could never get away with something. The nature of the film, we had, to, we had to get permissions from everyone. Getting permissions in Western Australia was particularly difficult because there were overlapping owners of the land who had different titles to the land. Every part of land that isn't in private hands is Crown land. So they have the title, so you had to get permission from them to be filming on land. Then you had to get permission from the Department of Environment and Conservation. We then had uh, the individual owners of the land. Carlton Hill, where the uh, homestead was built, was actually part of a cattle property. There was also the traditional owners of the land who, in a very complicated way, uh, have uh, equal rights to the pastoral leaseholders. So really there were four different overlapping permissions before you could virtually do anything on any of those places that we finally filmed in. To do that is a heck of a lot of paperwork. But we had a great team, we worked together and we got it done. Thank you.